Role-playing games and PlayStation go together like a sword slash and a blue slime. If you've fallen in love with a PlayStation console over the years, you've likely also fallen in love with an iconic RPG, from the multi-disc worlds of PS1 Final Fantasies to the cutting-edge PS2 and PS3 Final Fantasies to the life-consuming MMORPG Final Fantasies. Okay, I'm partially joking. There's more to the genre than Final Fantasy. In fact, there are so many rich RPG subgenres, you could make top 10 lists about any of them. We've designed this list to take in as many kinds of RPG as possible. And like all our PS5 top 10 lists, we're looking at games with a native PS5 release, so no PS4 backwards compatibility shoutouts have made the cut. But we've got a whole other list of PS4 picks, so check out that at the end of this video if you still want to grind out a little more RPG XP. I'm going to pass over to Ash for our first pick. Oh, looks like I rolled a natural 20 to get this one, eh? If you're not already obsessed with Baldur's Gate 3, then let me implore you to come to the dark side. No, the underdark side. This Dungeons & Dragons based adventure through the land of Faerun has everything an RPG player needs to grow big and strong. A narrative shaped by your own good deeds and evil inclinations, lots of very killable characters, big dragons, fantastical creatures, naughty turn-based battles, potent magic, and most importantly, a character creator you can lose hours to as you bring tabletop dreams to life. As a fan of D&D, it is decidedly special, but as an RPG player, it is downright phenomenal. What starts as a pressing quest to figure out how to free yourself from a cursed tadpole Yep, they really couldn't have chosen a more repellent description of your brain passenger than Tadpole, soon spirals into political intrigue and world-shattering consequences. Don't worry though, there's plenty of romancing to be done along the way too. It's the rare RPG that openly acknowledges the genre's tabletop origins, complete with on-screen dice rolls and howlingly funny results that could only come from a twisted human dungeon master. Baldur's Gate 3 is a work of art as a game and a defining example of the CRPG. Just make sure you've got a good 100 hours or so spare to see every inch of this game when it gets its tentacles in you. Did you know the word Octopath is built from the first letter of the names of all eight protagonists in Octopath Traveler 2? And also that the game's various boss themes are all designed to flow smoothly from cutscene into battle without skipping a beat. Some good ammo for you there if you're ever talking about Octopath Traveler 2 in the pub and have somehow run out of gasping praise for everything else the game does so well. Here is a JRPG built from a retro blueprint yet fitted with all the PS5 mod cons. Look at a screenshot and you'll likely coo at the charming pixel art style. Then you see it move and spend the next few days trying to articulate the essence of Octopath Traveler 2's graphical magic trick and failing because I'm not sure there's actually a term yet for whatever this is. The old animated by the new. Kind of like watching your grandma break dance. Visuals aside, my favourite thing about Octopath is its Moorish battle system, built on a simple framework of risk reward that lends every encounter, especially the bosses, a thrilling tactical edge. The boost mechanic encourages you to fight with courage, determinedly building up to your most powerful attacks when your instinct may be to defend and spam potions. Combined with some of the best music this side of Final Fantasy and a cast of characters you'll instantly fall in love with, Octopath Traveler 2 is the perfect example of a JRPG doubling down on everything that makes the genre great while trampling the more tired tropes into the dirt as it strides towards a bold future. Sometimes, playing an RPG is all about seeing what cool things you can find in a land designed for discovery. And by cool things, I of course mean as many skeletons as possible. Enter Elden Ring, whose open world stretches out before you in every direction as it dares you to explore further. A dare that is then met by a cruel slap to the face from freaky monsters that love killing tarnished. And that's a literal slap if you go to Karia Manor. You can't talk RPGs without acknowledging the influence of From Software's uncompromising action RPGs. And while we were tempted to go for the gorgeous Demon's Souls remake, including Rob's favourite, The Tower Knight, 
Elden Ring is our pick for the way it unshackles that brutal, precise combat from a linear path. You can approach the lands between in any way you wish, with distant structures and intimidating landscapes all holding secrets unrelated to your main quest. And by that, I don't just mean there's loads of side content, but that you can truly roleplay as a part of Elden Ring's open world by simply picking a direction and vibing there until you feel like wandering off elsewhere if you see something cool and shiny to head over to. Active volcanoes spewing lava, flowery midsummer-esque towns, underground skies filled with stars. There's so much to discover that you could almost forget about the gigantic, cinematic boss fights until you accidentally stumble into one of their arenas. Well, almost. Whether it's the mournful honk of Sea Power's haunting trumpets or the bleary-eyed portrait of its hungover hero, it's clear from the off that Disco Elysium The Final Cut is an RPG unlike any other. Combat is practically non-existent in a game that instead revolves around guiding an absolute car crash of a human being through a murder investigation in the dilapidated port of Martinez. How messed up is our detective? That partially depends on the character you build, but even with the best intentions, you can end up dying of a heart attack in the opening minutes. Cop suffers final heart attack. A detective lieutenant of the RCM passed away yesterday. And in the best case scenario, it can still take several hours to work out your own name because you've fried so many brain cells with booze. Here's hoping we can loot some Alka-Seltzer. Somehow, this shambles of a man has to cure the rot at the heart of Martinez, a process that varies hugely based on whether you build a Sherlockian sleuth of pure logic, a disarming charmer like Columbo, or an uncompromising maverick straight out of Luther. Whatever police stereotype you throw at it, Disco Elysium honours your choices, bringing them to life with dark, swirling prose, acidic humour and shock revelations that'll keep you gasping into the early morning hours. Well, as long as your bozo cop can stay awake that long. Where some RPGs champion stories that shape to fit the player, others are happy with one immutable tale brilliantly told. Final Fantasy is the perfect example, and while any mainline title would happily fill a position on this list, I'm going to put Final Fantasy 16 in the spotlight for this one. I mean, just look at our boy Clive here. He was made for the spotlight. Husky northern voices, heaving male bosoms, and the balance of life and death all collide in this stunning modern action RPG, where real-time fighting and a central protagonist mark a big deviation from the series' party-based roots. This lone wolf act pays off big style when you get to the game's icon battles. Massive, kaiju-like encounters where you transform into a beast and duke it out with other monsters. The mechanic at the heart of a game that encourages you to absorb their powers and wield them for the good of the realm. Final Fantasy XVI is full of big emotional storytelling to accompany the big emotional fighting, and playing as Clive allows for plenty of hair flipping and brooding, as is necessary for the series' heroes. It's the perfect introduction to a massive game series if you haven't had the chance to experience the Final Fantasy magic for yourself yet, and a fresh take on a classic for returning fans to experiment with. I'm just here to bask in all the northern accents, though, to be honest. You two behave now. Holy moly, Persona 5 Royal is cool. Like, impossibly cool. The heroes are cool. The hangouts of Tokyo are cool. Even the flipping user interface is cool. I almost feel too uncool to talk about it. Like a nerdy high school kid nervously trying to stand as close as I can to the older kids hanging out on the rooftop. Will they like me? Please like me. This has always been the Persona way. But Persona 5 Royal is wish fulfilment on another level. You live above a trendy coffee shop by day and masquerade as a phantom thief by night, jacking into the souls of criminals Inception style. Entering these palaces, the physical manifestation of a person's nastiest urges, means smashing through their defences with a legion of battle personas and then robbing them blind, all set to an acid jazz soundtrack. 
Look at me saying acid jazz like a cool person. It's not right. And when you're not dungeon crawling, you're negotiating an even trickier situation. How to use precious spare time in a city of a thousand distractions. Do you get a Saturday job, swat up for your next exam, or try to deepen your bonds with your pals? Yes, even cool people have to work hard to impress other cool people. For over 100 hours, you'll feel like you're at the heart of the most exciting place on Earth. A role everyone should play, at least once. Now, RPGs aren't all about the big AAA fantasy experiences, as Citizen Sleep approves with its thoughtful, artistic approach to a science fiction world that explores the meaning of sentience. And by that, I mean it has a whole thing where you explore the meaning of life with a... Wait, let me just check my notes here. Oh, yeah, a vending machine. Behold the lofty ambitions of the indie RPG the cool, quirky cousin of your dungeon-crawling classics that decides to do things a little differently. Inspired by tabletop mechanics right down to rolling dice to distribute for resource management, more fun than it sounds, I promise, you play as a sleeper, which is a once-human consciousness that has been transplanted into a mechanical body for government work. The game starts after you've escaped your facility and are out to make a new life for yourself, tasked to explore the space station you've been smuggled onto whilst trying to stay alive by eating delicious spicy fungus. Citizen Sleeper is largely fueled by description, with reading and responding your primary way of experiencing the world, playing like a more grounded disco elysium. It is a refreshing little sip of stylized space juice in an RPG landscape that most associate with big, sprawling open worlds of dragons and swords, and well worth checking out if you're after a different flavour of RPG. Reminder, that flavour is spicy fungus though. Next, we've got Final Fantasy XIV, an MMORPG so all-encompassing it would probably get on the top 10 RPG lists not just for PS5, but for PS4 and PS3 as well. So far, I've spent over 300 hours in the world of Eorzea. Final Fantasy XIV is officially my most played game on PS4, yet still feel like a total noob next to those who were properly invested. I mean, for some people, Final Fantasy XIV is less playing a game and more living an additional life, logging in, haggling over virtual real estate, deciding which chaise longue best complements their armour set. It's a real commitment. Luckily, Final Fantasy XIV is every bit as welcoming to those players who want a more casual role-playing experience. You know, just a few hundred odd hours of questing, raiding and god-slaying. Because on top of being massive and multiplayer and online, what I really appreciate about XIV is how well it caters to fans of the series' single-player routes. Indeed, the campaigns of XIV's various expansions, that's Heaven's Ward, Stormblood, Shadowbringers, Endwalker and the upcoming Dawn Trail, are arguably every bit as compelling as anything the series' more traditional entries have to offer. And then, once you've sucked the dungeons dry of loot and EXP, You can kick back with a bit of fishing or goldsmithing. It's a game that rewards you however you play it. In the 10 years since its original release, Final Fantasy XIV has become an absolute role-playing goliath. A varied and vibrant world populated by fascinating characters and stories and brought to life by a thriving community. A game the scale, ambition and longevity of which we'll likely never see again. Okay, quick, whilst Rob is distracted with Final Fantasy, I'm going to sneak in here to talk about Skyrim, because it's our sacred duty to have the Elder Scrolls on any list like this, as so agreed in the White Gold Concordant of 4E175. Look closely, it's in the fine print. I'm sure you know Skyrim's deal by now, but as a small introduction or light refresher, it is massive, it is full of dragons, and it is very chaotic. I mean, where else can you head underground on a quest to smash up ancient robots armed with a sword made of glass whilst playing as an anthropomorphic cat? And that's boring by Elder Scrolls standards. There's a lovable roguishness to Skyrim that has helped it last multiple console generations, where you'll be faced with tricky political arcs and drunken nights of debauchery in the same breath as becoming an integral member of an assassination cult. You can shape your character to be better behaved than that, of course, as the magic of Skyrim comes from starring as the chosen one in a land of opportunity. It's just a lot more fun to steal and pillage and kill a couple of chickens along the way, if you're quick enough. 
Developer Sabotage's superpower is taking the cherished genres of yesteryear and updating them for the 21st century. They did it for ultra-hard 8-bit platformers in The Messenger and now for 16-bit JRPGs. Think Chrono Trigger, Secret of Mana, Illusion of Gaia, all stuff that should be ultra-obvious from one glance at the gorgeous sprite art and the sight of monsters getting their heads bashed in one polite combat turn after the next. It's a properly good battle system too, with timed presses to increase the ouch, inter-party tag teams straight out of Chrono Trigger, and elemental magics that can neutralise incoming pain by using the right combo of moves. And it's so elegantly handled, from the soundtrack contributions by Chrono Trigger maestro Yasunori Mitsuda to our hero's ability to change the time of day. Just a clever excuse to show off how real-time lighting adds extra oomph to those retro looks. Honestly, I could hijack this list as top 10 reasons to play Sea of Stars. There's cooking to rival Final Fantasy XV's and a dinky pirate ship to explore the world. It even hits upon the JRPG holy grail of having a mini-game you'd happily play as its own game. A little mechanised action figure brawler called Wheels. I'm telling you, it's the new Gwent. But this isn't a video just about Sea of Stars. More's the pity. So you just have to trust me that it's spectacularly good. And that brings us to the end of our top 10 RPGs and, oh no wait, I forgot, it wouldn't be a proper RPG list without a secret extra boss waiting behind the final boss. So here's Rosie with another bonus pick. Yes, it's me, hijacking this video with the 11th RPG you must play on PS5. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Yakuza Like a Dragon. A phenomenal game where you, Ichiban Kasuga, take the blame for a murder you didn't commit, go to prison for 18 years, eat the best bread I've ever seen, come out and essentially find out what the hell has happened during your absence and what on earth is going on now. And trust me, there is a lot going on. However, you're not finding this out alone, as you're accompanied by a party of characters who all have their own reasons for joining you, only for you all to get really close and become the best of friends. <laughs> I swear, I've had more drinks with these characters in a bar than my actual friends. But you don't just go drinking in bars, as the world is filled with all sorts of things you can do. Play baseball, sing karaoke, manage your own company, collect cans on a bike, so many things. And this is accompanied by fantastic turn-based combat, amazing music, brilliant side quests, and lots of homages to the iconic series Dragon Quest. One of Ichiban's goals in life is to become a hero like the one in Dragon Quest. I mean, how can you beat that character trait? So yes, it's an RPG in love with RPGs. So what better RPG to win this top 11 RPGs on PS5? So thank you for watching this video. It's almost as epically long as some of these RPGs. Did we cover your favorite RPG on PS5? If you think we missed something amazing, let us know your top picks in the comments and please give this video a like to help us level up. Subscribe for more great videos from the world of PlayStation and we'll see you again soon.